Okay guys, in this video segment we're going to talk about nuclear fission and how that applies to the stuff we've been doing in class. And basically what we're going to deal with is what happens when we bombard big nuclei with neutrons. Um, when you do that, if you slam a, a neutron into a large nuclei, what can happen is you can split that nuclei into two smaller uh, different atoms. And when that happens, we undergo what we call fission. Um, so when we deal with fission, a couple of things to keep in mind that anything that is bigger than iron, okay, so iron is kind of our break even point, anything with a mass number greater than 56 or bigger than iron technically can be um, split apart or can undergo fission. Um, in reality, not everything does, does that easily. Um, and on, in our purposes, we usually tend to use two different isotopes, uranium-235 and plutonium-239, as our most common fissionable uh, isotopes. These are ones that we use in nuclear reactors and then, of course, in our nuclear bombs also. Um, this process produces extraordinary amounts of energy. Okay, So the way it does that is when you split the atom and you split that nucleus, what happens is there's a little bit of mass lost in the process by which you take one big nucleus and put it into two smaller ones. And it's truly a mass being lost, and we actually truly create energy in this process. So unlike a chemical reaction where we have potential energy stored in bonds and we re just release that potential energy, in nuclear energy, we actually don't have the energy there. It's stored in the mass of the substance. So when you actually split the molecule, there's actually a decrease in mass. So you lose mass, you truly lose mass, and you get energy from that. And then we can calculate that based off of Einstein's uh, famous equation E equals mc squared. So you can imagine C is 3.0 times 10 to the 8, which is a very, very big number. Um, and then the mass that we, that we get from this, or we lose from this, I should say, is actually a very small number. So we, we lose a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of mass, but because we're multiplying it times a gigantic number squared, we end up getting a lot of energy out of that process. Okay, To kind of give you an idea, just a kilogram of uranium-235, so just one kilogram, about 2.2 pounds of this stuff, has the explosive or the energy content of 20,000 tons of dynamite. Okay, So if you see the comparison there, this little mass, probably a softball size or less of this stuff, um, probably not even that, maybe like a golf ball size of this stuff, because how dense it is, is going to be 20,000 tons worth of dynamite um, in terms of its energy content. So it's a pretty big um, amount of energy that we get. We're going to watch a little video clip here on nuclear fission, kind of how it works, and then we'll go from there. Binding energy per nucleon reaches a maximum at a mass of about 56. Larger nuclei become more unstable as the mass increases. Very large nuclei, such as uranium-235, can split when they are hit by high-energy neutrons. In nuclear fission, a large amount of energy is released, and two smaller, more stable nuclei, such as barium-139 and krypton-94, are formed. Additional neutrons are also released. If a critical mass of uranium-235 is present, then most of the released neutrons are captured by other uranium-235 nuclei, and a nuclear chain reaction results, as can be seen in this animation. The energy from nuclear fission reactions is harnessed in atomic bombs and in nuclear reactors. Okay, so the, vid the video kind of showed why these fission reactions can be so powerful and actually so dangerous, is every time you split one atom, what you get from that is three additional neutrons. So one neutron creates this nuclear reaction, which dumps a lot of energy. But also from that, you get three more particles that can now split three more atoms. So we call that a chain reaction, where basically one creates more and more and more, and you actually get this exponential growth. And if you don't control that exponential growth, you get this very fast and very explosive uh, reaction, which is what our nuclear bombs are. Um, in here, you notice how it's krypton, barium, rubidium, cesium, strontium, xenon. There's lots of different ways it can split. Um, the whole mechanism behind why it splits the way it does, we don't completely understand yet, as far as I know. Um, so there's lots of different isotopes it can turn into, but they all release these extra neutrons, and those neutrons are then used to um, basically split more atoms. So in this... Uh, simulation here we have a little gun that is going to represent shooting a neutron out and then we have a uranium-235 atom here so what happens is when you shoot this with a neutron you give it enough energy where it actually breaks free of this energy trough and splits that atom apart so if we take a look at a chain reaction now just shooting a single one 
you get energy and extra nuclei set up, but we want to have more than one of these. So if we have a few sitting around and we do this process, depending on where the nuclei fly off to, they may or may not hit other ones and we may not get a chain reaction. So they call having enough of it present the critical mass. So if you have enough of it around where when you split it, all those neutrons are going to hit other ones, then you get what we call a chain reaction or an uncontrolled chain reaction. And this is slowed down probably about a billion times in terms of how fast it really happens for a real atom. Now, remember, we also need to process our uranium for reactions. So it's a mix of uranium-238 and uranium-235. So if we don't process it and purify the uranium so we have enough uranium-235 present compared to 238, the 238 also kind of gets in the way and it doesn't allow the reaction to happen as fast. And it also allows it to kind of block some of those, and it also absorbs some of these different things. So uranium-238 can actually be kind of used as a way to slow this thing down, not because it actually slows down the reaction, but more that it um, is able to absorb some of those neutrons inside of there. Okay. Now, once you're inside a nuclear reactor, what we have... Uh, inside your chambers where the reactions are running, you have these things called control rods. And the control rods are basically barriers between different cells of uranium-235. And if you fire a neutron, what happens, it creates a reaction. Now, the control rods, we can move those up and down. And if the control rods, or if you want the reaction to run very quickly, you can remove the control rods and fire neutrons. And you can see where this thing starts to react. And then very quickly, we reach a lot of temperature, it gets very hot, we produce a lot of energy, as that reaction runs, okay? So what, what the um, engineers do in these things, if we reset this, is they actually use these control rods and they move them up and down to maintain the speed of the reaction. So they fire the neutron, and then they move it up. If it gets too hot, and they move it up to slow the process back down. If it gets too low... They open it back up and can let the reaction happen a little bit more. So they can move these control rods back and forth, basically complete controlling the reaction. Now the individual reactions run at their own speed, but what these control rods do is they're basically material in here that absorb neutrons, or, or kind of like that uranium-238 did in our last example. So they actually control or absorb neutrons, so they block some of these things from reacting. So it's a way that we control the speed of the reaction. Now remember, you can't actually, you know, change the rate of the actual process, but what we can do is control how many neutrons are released or not absorbed by the control rods, and those control rods absorb the neutrons. Once they absorb the neutrons, then there's less neutrons out there to cause more of the uranium-238 to split. So this is basically the way that we run our power plant, our nuclear power plants, is by moving these in and out, and that can very quickly change the speed of the reactions, how much is reacting, maintain the temperature, and those kind of things. So when you guys do your nuclear research on Friday, or later on, I should say, um, you could do some reaction because some of the nuclear incidents that we have have involved these control rods not working properly, or them breaking, or being held open, or sensors not working right to control this the proper way, and then you get these runaway reactions in our in our chambers. So that's one thing to kind of look at. Now, if we go back to our uh, PowerPoint here, um, kind of the same idea here. If we don't control this reaction using those control rods, the reaction happens almost instantaneously. Okay, It's almost imaginable how fast these things can split. You get one to split, and then these things are moving almost the speed of light, these neutrons are. So you get all these things to reaction to happen so fast that you get this massive chain reaction. And if we don't control it, that's basically the atomic bomb. Okay, So um, an uncontrolled chain reaction is a, an atomic bomb. Whereas a nuclear power plant is just basically a controlled chain reaction where we're maintaining the number of neutrons that get released and we're able to actually maintain that and harness that energy. So we let that energy roll out slowly versus rolling out very fast. Here's a little video for you. This plant harnesses the power of the atom so that we have the energy to run everything from your favorite video game to yummy cotton candy machines. <laughs> Let's learn more about nuclear energy, shall we?
Lights. When most people think of nuclear energy, they think of this. But when we talk about nuclear energy, we really mean this. But what exactly is nuclear energy? I don't know, but I know someone who does. Smiling Joe Fission. Hi there, energy eaters. I'm Smiling Joe Fission, your atomic tour guide to the strange and exciting world of nuclear power. And these are rods of uranium-235. Hi, Rod. Hey, Rod. Hey, How you doing, hey, Rod? Good to see you. Hey, you guys look hot. Of course we're hot. We're radioactive. Uh-oh. Well, how about a dip in the pool? Yeah. What do you think about you, Rod? spins turbines that generate energy. Bert, sit down. Uh-oh. Whoops. Looks like there's a little leftover nuclear waste. No problem. I'll just put it where nobody will find it for a million years. Well, so now you know the whole true story of nuclear energy. Our no longer misunderstood friend. So keep on smiling. Okay, um, obviously this video from The Simpsons doesn't give the truth, the whole story, but it does give a pretty good clip of what happens in our nuclear power plants or our nuclear reactors. Um, it isn't quite as simple as what they show, but that's the basics behind it.